This is the Entertainment Roundup for June the 3rd, 2012. I'm J77 doing this audio topic, and I'm just going to go right straight to the point and pay my respects to Richard Dawson. As you guys know, Richard Dawson has passed away um, yesterday. Um, he w- it was news actually broke out um, through a um, Facebook message from his son, I believe, and um, explaining that he have um, died due to complications um, um, from cancer. He was 79 years old, and uh, my memories of Dawson pretty much is all Family Feud. I know uh, he was also in the Match Game. Um, I did not watch Hogan the Hero, so I can't really say too much about that. But uh, what I do remember him, what I do remember him the most was from the days where he was the host of Family Feud. Um, his humor um, basically lit up the screen um, when uh, people made some um, critical errors when it came to the um, to the money rounds. Uh, he ended up laughing. I ended up laughing because he was laughing. Some of the questions that the host um, came um um, came up. He was very colorful. I really did enjoy him as the host. And the show never really was the same uh, once he left. I mean, they had other hosts that I did follow. Um, his predecessor was okay. Didn't really follow um, Louis Anderson too much. Um, Steve Harvey is actually um, surprisingly um, the um, the closest I think he ever gotten to it. But that's a debate for another time. But uh, Richard Dawson was definitely one of my favorites. Um, on YouTube, I always look for the classic Richard Dawson Family Foods more than anything else um, that I do for my search. And uh, every time I watch him um, do the, be the host of Family Food, one of the classic moments, it always cracks me up. I think the best one uh, is when the, she uh, he asked a woman... Um, what um, at what point is the woman um, show that she's pregnant? And I think the woman, instead of saying three months or four months, she gave an exactly um, the date of the month, like November, uh, and that and that pretty much. Uh, I think they had to do a lot of heavy editing at that one because he just started laughing more so uh, with the other um, con- other woman who came out. He just started laughing because that was the way the question was uh, presented it uh, to the point where he didn't even bother with the uh, with the cl- with the time limit. Um, he just let it go and let her answer the questions. Um, Another memory I have with him, and you can actually find both of these on you on YouTube, uh, is when he asked an animal a pet with three letters, and for some reason or another, no one answered this right. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe, but one said frog, and the other one said alligator, and he tried his best to hold back on the laughter, uh, and he asked, he asked one of the, the contestants, uh... <laughs> You're not on any medication, are you? And I was just started laughing because uh, it's pretty much nervousness when a lot of these um, contestants um, in the game show. But he, but it was more fun when he was more interactive uh, with them. Um, as for the match game, he was good there in the match game. It just it was more my mom's game than mine's, um, so she probably has better memories of the matching game um, than anything. Um, but he was always a colorful game show host, really is a pioneer of the game show host. Uh, and to this day, um, he has one of the best classic moments in game shows history. Um, I think the game show channel had did a special segment on him alone um, with Family Feud. Um, it is... Uh, <laughs> He's gonna be missed, man. He's really gonna be missed. Um, and uh, I, 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 you know, I, uh, my condolences go out to his family. Um, he's definitely um, a guy who um, really, really uh, set the standards for game shows. Uh, out of all the game show hosts, he one that made me laugh the most. Um, especially out of all the game shows that I've seen in over the years, he was the one that made me laugh the most. Um, he became a legendary Family Feud host. Dawson worked regularly on as an actor. He co-starred in Hogan's Heroes and appeared in many other shows, including the new Dick Van Dyke show and uh, Rounder and Martin's Laughing. I've never heard of that before. Um, he made his mark uh, on the big um, screen as a villainous um, demon-killing uh, uh, Diamond Cullen and Arnold Schwarzenegger 19... 87's sci-fi action, The Running Man. 
Um, so he's definitely has been in Hollywood. He knows the business left and right. Um, and um, we, we are, we're missing a very good, colorful guy right now. So again, Dawson, Richard Dawson, dead at 79. I will leave the link to the uh, to the uh, news. You guys can check it out yourself and read it all. Um, on your own spare time, or better yet, just give me um, your comments on your memories of uh, the legendary um, actor, game show host, um, and um, express yourself on that, um, on what I just mentioned here. Um, so again, Dawson passing away at the age of 79, um, lost his battle to cancer, uh, but he will always be remembered for millions, especially those who are huge fans of Family Feud. Um, gonna go to full steam now. I gotta talk about Donald Trump. Um, this story came out uh, recently, um, and uh, <laughs> and I kind of have. I, I always have funny uh, how when certain people have um, have do something or say something that automatically that doesn't make them what a lot of people are accusing them um, of of him um, being. Uh, I'm gonna give my own opinion about this. Um, in fact, I probably would have put this on my What's News forum. But the fact that Arsenio Hall is a celebrity, and the fact technically Donald Trump is actually a celebrity more so than he is a um, in politics and everything, I decided to put it on the uh, the Entertainment Roundup. But apparently, um, Donald Trump had picked Arsenio Hall as the winner of Celebrity Apprentice, and all this said this proves he's no racist, which I'm not buying one bit. Now, here's the thing. I never even said that he was a racist, but I think he's a total idiot and a guy who is a radical when it comes to his political point of views because he won't let the birth certificate of Obama die out. He's continuing throwing that out there. And it's gotten to the point where either I'm asking him, are you really upset because he, you don't think he's an American citizen or because he's black? Because it, this whole thing is getting ridiculous. And the fact is, I don't even think people know, you can't become a president unless you are actually born in the United States. Which he was. Stop trying to say he's not. But again, I digress. There are people who still don't believe he's an American citizen. And I kind of question, is it because they do not honestly believe he's an American citizen? Or do they believe that because he's black and they can't see him as part of, as you know, someone who's intelligent and smart and um, should be leading the um, leading the White House. I'm just saying, there's some, there's got to be a hidden motive behind that. Um, but anyway, um, this article came out about Donald Trump um, and an address that um, at the North Carolina State Republican Convention, Trump said the outcome of the season celebrity shows he's no racist. And that's why I'm not buying that one bet, but let's leave it alone. Somebody said, oh, because I brought up a birth certificate, I'm a racist, Donald said. No, I just think you brought up the birth certificate because you're an idiot. That's, all, that's, all my, that's my own opinion, and you should leave that alone. I said, how can I be a racist? I just pick Arsenio Hall. That don't mean nothing. If anything else, if people's going to say you're trying to cover your tracks. Again, I digress. Question over President Obama's birth um, place appeared to be put to rest last year after he released his long birth certificate which shows he was born in Hawaii. But Trump has seized one last month to a one last month to release a um a a brentbirth.com of an Obama, um, Obama Abology compl complied nearly two decades ago as evidence of a conspiracy to conceal president's origins. And again, I have to ask the question: What the hell? Why you keep bringing this up? Um, the biography identified uh, Obama's birthplace as Kenya. The association, the association, the agent who edited the later told Yahoo that it was an error. Now, if the guy said he was an error, and it's already been proven that he showed his birth certificate living in Hawaii, why are you continuing to bring this up? Leave it alone. You're bringing it up, and it makes no sense, and you're talking that when you go on these um, talk shows and these news radio shows, you're not talking like a smart man. You're talking like a, a ranter who is hell-bent on destroying a person's reputation just for the sake of doing it. You have no grounds to do that. And it does make you look like a racist because people are going to start asking, are you doing this because you think he really wasn't born in the United States or are you doing it because he's black? 
And by the way, I'm just because you pick some city hall don't really need nothing to me. It really don't. If anything, it's gonna add more questions to your um, reasoning for picking a city hall. I'm just saying. But anyway, that's pretty much. This was a short list, so that's pretty much. Just read you the whole uh, entire topic. You guys can t um can comment on it if you want. Um, I'll leave a link. You guys can talk about it. But I'm just saying to you guys that uh, he pulling this on himself. If people do believe he's a racist, he brought it on himself because he won't leave something well alone. Nobody else was talking about it. He keeps bringing it up. Even if people said to bring it up, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Jesus. Anyway, as uh, we move on, we went from Donald Trump, Family Feud. I gotta talk about this one, Sesame Street. <laughs> My friend, look at me like I'm crazy. There's a reason why I'm bringing up Sesame Street, and it appears, and I'm, I thought this was a joke myself until I actually saw other reports backing this up. And it has something to do with Gautamo Bay, by the way. So this is why it's being brought up. It appears <laughs> that the method of torture has been implemented in Gautamo Bay. What's the torture, you may ask? The music from Sesame Street. <laughs> Look, guys, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound fun, sound like I'm, I'm making a joke out of it, because I'm really not. But... Really? Let me just read the whole story. I'm going to read to you the main headline so you guys can fully understand where I'm coming from with this. Sesame Street songs and heavy metal blasts blasted to torture Guantanamo Tom Taney's reports. This was reported. All right, I'm going to give you the guy's name uh, right here. It was reported by uh, Michigan Niles from the New York Daily News. Okay, um, so I'm just letting you guys know where this is coming from, all right? Um, a new documentary released by A.J. Uh, Zazira exposed the use of children's songs and heavy metal music to torture prisoners at Guantanamo Bay, a tactic that comes about not long after President George W. Pierce created a camp to detain prisoners in the war on terror against Al-Qaeda. Sesame Street songwriter Christopher Chef, um, Shepard, uh, the film after discovering um, spearheaded the film after discovering songs he wrote to teach kids how to read and write were being used as weapons of war. The report has launched a controversial interrogation measure back into the spotlight. Let me read again. Let me read another paragraph. According to the documents, prisoners were stripped, were strapped to a chair and played music. Metallica, ACDC, Eminem. Eminem is not, wait a minute. Eminem is not heavy metal. Just want to let you guys know. You guys messed up already. Eminem is not heavy metal. That's rap. Or R&B. Just want to point that out there. Alright, now this says Barney. Barney's not Sesame Street. Oh, jeez. And others at loud volumes for hours or days on end. The Pentagon spokesman Captain John Kirby told reporters Susie that the military used music as an disincentive but said it's not torture. It is done in a measure in a measure way in keeping with our obligations and commitment to treating detainees humanely hum humanly. Kirby told the press, declined that to comment on what specific music was played on or if the method is still being used today. In 1989, in, I'm sorry, in 2008, Associated Press report detainees on uh, report detained how loud and uh, repetitive music were used to create fear um, and and disoriented on prolonging um, capture shock at uh, um, prolonging captive shock at Katama Bay and other prisoners in Iraq and Afghanistan. The music drove some prisoners literally mad, screaming and banging on their banging their head against the wall. Well, yeah, that's very serious there. According to reports, others said they would have tried to commit suicide if there were no th if there was a way to do so. Songs like Eminem, which is not heavy metal, 
White America, Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen is not heavy metal. Could, this guy don't know what heavy metal is. Born in the USA was chosen. AP, a, um, AP report. Do you, well, I would say right now, um, there were other reports talking about this, about the music related incident. As for this report here, there's already errors on this because Barney is not uh, Sesame Street. Barney's a whole different show by on his own. I'm not gonna lie to you. If you play music of Barney a couple of times, I probably go insane too. I'm just saying, Eminem is not heavy metal. So, I'm you guys take this this article for a grain of salt. I'm not saying that the guy from Daily News is lying. I just think that he's, uh, his information is a little bit uh, suspicious there. But in any case, um, am I saying that it's actually happening like that? One can only tell. Um, they keep in mind, you don't have to inflict bodily harm to torture your enemies. Uh, keeping the light on 24 hours a day that is bright, you can't even sleep. Um, you know, music can also be a part of that. Just strapping yourself in a chair, listening to music is also a part of a method of torture, even though they claim it's not. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff like this. So, I'm not saying that this is not happening, but uh, judging from this report, uh, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of wondering because, like I said, Eminem is not heavy metal, and the, and the report clearly states, and I'm looking at it right now as we speak, Sesame Street songs and heavy metal blasts to torture guitar maintainees. Eminem is not heavy metal. ACDC, you want to say A is in the heavy metal brand? I don't think it is, but it all depends what type of old school metal it is. Metallica, pretty much, but Barney's not Sesame Street. And others, so um, I'm only assuming the others meaning that you hear Big Bird singing something. All right, that's the only thing I can tell you. Um, it does uh, report, and this is something that I've saw on other sites called uh, Christopher Chief have um, talked about the songs and uh, and was not uh, very happy about this. I cannot imagine because when I saw it, I said, "Are you serious? Sesame Street? Are you serious now?" But that's what. Uh, but apparently, um, nothing surprised me when it comes to that camp. Keep in mind, when you're in Guantanamo Bay, you don't have American rights, and that's one of the reasons why they open it. So uh, uh, the rights of those guys do not apply to the rights we have in the United States of America. So nothing surprised me. Goes on. Keep in mind, it's behind closed walls, and that brings me to another question: Is who leaked this information? As well as is this information is accurate, and how, and does that person still have a job? in the military after that but I'm gonna leave you the link anyway I'll, tr I'll s attempt to put another link here so you guys can uh, match stories because this guy's story is is not that well well orchestrated I'm just saying well let's go to No Doubt I'm moving right on along um, No Doubt um, has a lawsuit against um, Band Hero uh, video games uh, video game studios um, and according to what I believe I'm going to read a little bit about this because it's very interesting that um, this laws do I think it was an, an improper use of uh, of their image or their songs and they're looking to stop the uh, stop them from you know releasing the game um, I'll read some of the stuff to you and I'll talk about it uh, because I have heard about this, but really didn't follow it. I didn't know No Doubt was still in existence because I thought Glenn Stefani went on her own. Um, no Doubt attorneys can argue to the jury that the ban was misled by Gamers Giants Advertisement Publisher Inc. about how its likeness would be used in the video game, Ban Heroes. The judge ruled Tuesday, so they got a grant that they're going to move forward. The ruling of the Supreme Court judge, Roman... Uh, Judge Romania sees rejected the motion by Ab by uh, Activision's lawyers to dismiss several claims from the case, including fraud, violation of public rights, publicity rights, and breach of contract. Seen seen determined they were um, geniuses dispute um, dispute above evidence that is that the jury should consider. No Doubt sued the, sued the Santa Monica, California-based video game company in November 2009, claiming that the band was never told that players would be able to unlock avatars of the band to perform other artists' music. 
This case cited interest in which players could use singers glorifying to perform a subjective lyric from the Rolling Stones. Rolling Stone hit Honky Tonk Woman. Hmm. Or have a virtual version of uh, Basic Tony Connell sing his band a hit just a girl but with Safani's voice. Interesting. The lawsuit claimed um, the features turned the band into a, a uh, virtual cardiac circus act. Uh, mm, interesting. Um, they also said the activist claimed the idea of unlocking unadvertised features um, of the video game has been around since the early days uh, of the industry and the company did nothing wrong. Attorney expect the case will go to trial later this year. Uh, this is very interesting. Um, I don't know how many cases like this exist. Uh, this is for what I understand. This is actually the first case that I've actually heard of. Um, but it definitely raised the question, do they have the right to mingle with the character's features? Um, should, uh, should players use their features to sing other people's music? Um, that is something that I, I really want to say that, uh, that will be, uh, interesting to see how this goes. And, um, and I think that a lot of game industries are going to be keeping an eye on this because it does have a potential to change the way um, features are used in other games, whether by music ca um, music actors, music musicians, or just playing actors in general. Because this is not just going to affect um, this case; it's going to affect everyone um, who wants to hire actors and actresses to be in um, their video games. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on. It's definitely something that uh, we we should at least, um, for at least if you're a gamer. Or game or game developer to keep um, a steady close attention to because um, it can have a very uh, strong impact on how um, they uh, negotiate deals with actors and musicians when it comes to their video games. Um, it also says in this um, in this article, and again, I will leave all links to any audio articles that I talked about. Um, Jeffrey McFarland who represents Activision said that the company has a strong defense and is looking forward to, to forward to presenting it during trial. During the hearing, he said that the company has a video recording of the van being told about the game's unlockable features. Interesting that he brought that up. Now, if there is a video recording, the question means that they knew about that video recording and is it written in contract? And I tell you why I say this. Um, video recording has been uh, a subject of a hot topic. If you record someone in video, depending on what state, that could be that could be thrown out, especially if they did not know that it was being recorded. All right. And if it's not being recorded, what exactly was told to them versus the contract they have signed? Is this because you have something on cam? Uh, something on camera? And you're saying, all right, we want to do this, and there's lockable characters. Unless they sign an approval, what good is that video cam video recording is going to do? Other than saying that they was told about it. So, we'll see about that one. The band's attorney, Brett um, Dexter, said the ruling seems um, in inventable and no, that no doubt is repeatedly, have repeatedly won the right to pursue the case in um, both state and and uh, other and uh, I think international courts, um, appellate courts. Okay. So yeah, this will be interesting. I'm kind of curious how this works. I'm gonna kind of curious how this gonna go. Um, if you guys are gamers and you know more about this, uh, and you guys feel that there that no doubt a group um, that I actually listened to during the 90s have a uh, has a strong case. Um, let me know if you guys are siding with um, the gamers. Let me know. Let me see what you guys feel about this. But yeah, I, this is something that I really didn't thought about. I didn't thought that uh, that uh, that once you sign a deal to use the avatar, I've you know unless there's some kind of hidden agreement that um, no one's telling about. I, I figured that Activision have the right to use the avatar as they fit. You know whether it's a lockable character or not. But apparently they're saying that uh, I don't doubt saying no. That wasn't the case. They did not ask permission and they should not do that with the features of what we have. So again this is something that uh, 
really going to uh, really, I think for gamers at least, should keep an eye on because it can affect the way um, your games are being represented, especially when they're trying to hire actors to use their features um, in future games to come. Um, but you guys, you know, you guys have an opinion. I'd like to hear from you guys out. I will talk about this. Uh, I will keep an update about this um, once I get more information and post it either on a separate video or on this type of audio topic. Last but not least, we're going to talk about X-Men and the Hunger Games. Now why I'm bringing these two up because finally there's been a resolve of um, keeping both the X-Men First Class sequel and Catching Fire, which is the second installment of the Hunger Games, um, away from uh, from filming, um, um, or in this way, conflicting with each other. Um, and the reason why this was such an important situation and a very delicate situation that both um, that both films um, not confront is because of one actress, um, Jennifer Lawrence. Now, Jennifer Lawrence, as you all know is the star plays Mystique in um, X-Men First Class. She is also happens to be a star in The Hunger Games, which um, from what I understand is she is going to be prized a role and is due to be released in November of 2013. Why is this such a big thing is because both films actually had a scheduling um, conflict. Um, and it happened back in the summer of 2010 before the Oscars nomination. Um, they, she was signed in the Hunger Games, and the Hunger Games had uh, the studios had exercise they needed right to exercise options to a contract, which bind her um, to the X-Men sequel if the conflict was with if it would conflict with the with another Hunger Games, um, according to most reports. Um, Keep in mind that uh, X-Men is uh, produced by 20th Century Fox, Hunger Games is produced by Liongate, and that's where the major situation was. Uh, so, I guess what they did was um, they split production um, and came to a compromising deal. And that compromising deal is that uh, X-Men will begin shooting next January, a delay that allows Lawrence, who plays a uh, mystique, <coughs> Soft stiff, uh, shape shift the mystique in uh, the superhero heroes to film the sequel to the Hunger Games this fall without any conflict according to Hollywood producers. So, um, the shooting will begin next January um, and uh, while that will be uh, while 20th Century Fox um, have pushed their shooting schedule to January it gives her plenty of time um, to shoot um, the Hunger Games later on this year um, and hopefully it will be finished in time for her to do the other project which is the uh, uh, which is the X-Men which by the way hasn't got an official title yet it's just called the X-Men First Class sequel uh, while Lawrence has a memorable part and the buddy superhero mystique uh, director Matthew Rowan, director of the superhero films that enjoys the previous reviews of the box office sets of 353 million after the release last summer. She remained part of a large assembling cast, but the 21-year-old career career didn't explode didn't explode until she starred until the star's marketing turn in the Hunger Games franchise that has dominated the box office for pretty much a month. Um, in the end, the studios apparently decided the best way to resolve the Hollywood quarrel is to pay nice since Fox plans to begin shooting for the superhero series in January and Hunger Games sequels Catching Fire moved towards a fall start date. Liongate met Fox halfway since the studios intentionally wanted to hold, um, to hold the cast of the Hunger Games for seven months with shooting for Catching Fire, the source told Hollywood reporters. Um... Catching Fire is set for a November 22nd, 2013 re uh, release, um, and and has stars Lawrence, uh, uh, and as well as Lane Hemsworth and Josh Hatcherson, signed to reprise their role. So there you have it. So now, um, Lawrence, uh, Jennifer Lawrence is going to be busy, busy, busy for the next year and a half, <laughs> and uh, with her popularity rising 
um, do expect there to be in more roles, especially um, with um, the two franchises she's in. I uh, expect her to see her um, in many, many other films to come. She's very, very good, very talented, um, and um, pretty much, uh, pretty much right now, one of the hottest females right now when it comes to um, f when it comes to actresses. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I, you know, in terms of the X Men series, uh, if you guys want to comment on that, um, f feel free to welcome. Um, if you want to comment on the, um, on the, uh, I think they did the right thing. So I'm just gonna, that's nothing else I can say. I think they compromised, and both uh, and both studios got what they wanted. They could have been pricks, and both of them would have went to court, fighting to for nail. But instead, they did the right thing. They com, they did a compromise. Nike gets what they want. Um, Fox get what they want, and uh, Jennifer Lawrence is a win-win situation for her because she don't have to worry about being in limbo. She can do she can um, do her um, obligations to both Hunger Games, to Hunger Games series, and the X-Men series. Um, no questions asked. So, you agree with this move? You disagree with this move? Do you think that uh, uh, this should have been a holdout, or do you think that hey, they both did the right thing and they then they're playing nice? Let me know and um, leave it in the comment section. Well, that's just about it for this uh, edition for the uh, Hollywood Entertainment Roundup. Um, you guys can comment below. I'll leave all links um, to the reports I just say. But until then, this is J77 saying you guys take care and be safe.